the 11th episode of Bleach's Thousand Year Blood War arc titled Everything But The Rain continues on from last week's episode, following Ichigo just as he has been sent back home from the Soul Society. Now this episode adapts material from chapters 528 of the manga all the way up until the midpoint of chapter 533, as we have roughly five and a half chapters worth of magna material in this week's episode. Now there are a lot of comedic moments that are cut out, with some scenes also being streamlined as the episode tries its best to convey to us the key moments of this story without disrupting the tension and seriousness of some specific scenes. As always, I'll refrain from talking about scenes which are one-to-one -one adapted from the manga, and I'll only focus on what's been cut, changed, and added to the anime. Before the intro sequence, we have material from chapter 529 as the first four pages of the chapter are adapted. Now this is where Nimaya explains to Renji why Ichigo was unsuccessful at submitting an Asauchi. After the intro song, we begin with material from chapter 528, where Ichigo is stood in front of Kurosaki Clinic in the pouring rain. Now this initial segment of the episode is streamlined, as his commentary on how his body had gotten here from Urahara's shop is cut from the anime. In the manga, he comments on how he is not in his Shinigami body anymore, and he thinks about how he had left his body at Urahara's shop. He even yells out to see if Urahara is around but he remembers that he is still in Hueco Mundo. He then deduces that his dad must have brought his body here, and the thought of seeing his dad after having failed is too much for him, so he runs away. In the anime, all of this is omitted, and instead we cut to Ishin just greeting Ichigo, but he realizes that he has run away. While at Ikumi's place, we see Ichigo showering and changing into a fresh pair of clothes. Now this scene is also streamlined within the anime, as in the manga, while he is in the shower, he comments on how it was good that Urahara, Chad, and Orihime were not in the world of the living, as he doesn't know how he would be able to face them after having failed to have reforged his Zanpakuto. He then especially singles out his dad, telling himself that how is he supposed to face him after having failed. The anime instead streamlines all of this in the monologue to him saying that how can he face them, as he doesn't mention anyone specifically, as he is embarrassed by being kicked out of the Soul Society without having his Zanpakuto fixed. Additionally, the interaction between Ichigo and Ikumi is also streamlined, as in the manga, Ikumi tells him that she has dried his clothes and tells him to put them on and to just go home, as she says that it's a good thing that her son was asleep, as he would have been annoyed if she knew that she had let Ichigo take a shower here. Now this is cut from the anime, as we just see Ichigo apologize to Ikumi, and a few speech bubbles are also cut from the anime, before Ikumi tells him that she is like his older sister. In the manga, she reassures Ichigo by telling him to rely on her if he is lonely, and if he is going through a rough time or even if he is just in the neighborhood. Now these points end up being cut for the sake of pacing, since the point that she is making is still conveyed without all of this extra fluff. Following this, a comedic exchange between the two of them is also cut from the anime, where Ichigo tells her that she must have some nerve to think that she is his older sister sister, when she is 10 years older than him. Instead of this being in the anime, we just hear the doorbell ring and Ishin arrives in his Shinigami attire. Another difference between the anime and the manga is that in the manga, before Ichigo leaves, Ikumi hands to him an umbrella, because it's still raining outside. But this scene is cut from the anime, which instead decides to emphasize the fact that Ichigo has left behind his substitute Shinigami badge. When he gets back home with his dad, two panels of comedic dialogue from Ishin are cut from the anime, where he tells Ichigo that it's been a while since he has been home as he comments on how it's not anything new for Ichigo to be away from his home for days at a time, as he then asks if he wants some food to eat, but Ichigo tells him to cut it out. Now again, this is removed in order to maintain the tension of the scene in the anime, which instead skips and just shows Ichigo commenting on his dad being dressed in his Shinigami attire. The anime also shortens down the two pages of flashback at the end of chapter 528, where Masaki tells Ishin her name and that she is a Quincy. In the manga, we see her elaborate a bit more as she runs towards Ishin as asking if he is okay, and he thanks her for saving him. He also feels embarrassed that a captain was helped out by a girl, but Masaki offers to heal him, as Ishin comments on how she was able to defeat this thing all on her own. The anime doesn't include all of this, as most of this was Kubo just teasing the readers towards the end of this chapter, so that it would have a suspenseful cliffhanger. We don't really need any of this at this moment, since we're going to see this exchange between the two of them, and who Masaki had defeated later on in the episode. The Everything But The Rain flashback begins by adapting material from 
chapter 529 as it takes us 20 years into the past where we see a younger Rangiku and Ishin who is the captain of the 10th division. Now Rangiku looking for Ishin is cut down in the anime as in the manga she ends up borrowing a tray from a couple of Shinigami as she fires it towards a tree where Ishin was hiding in. He falls out of it and she kicks the tray into Ishin's face breaking it. In the anime she instead kicks him out of the tree as the comedic scenes between the two of them are also cut short. Two pages of them joking around are not in the anime where Ishin is suspicious that she is just handing over all of her work to him and a gag between the two of them where he comments on how she is sweating which is giving her assets a nice glistening shine is also cut. Now I can appreciate why this wasn't in the anime and again it's just comedic moments that don't really add much to the story because we do see Ishin goofing around with his subordinates immediately after where he picks up a young Hitsugaya and he tells him that he is really proud of him and that he is going to make a fine captain in the future and the anime also keeps an additional comedic scene where Ishin repeatedly asks who had eaten his dumpling while Hitsugaya dodges the question. I love that they had retained all of this comedic banter as I think that it's really important to show that Ishin was very comfortable with his subordinates and the kind of dynamic that squad 10 had before Hitsugaya became captain and Rangiku was his lieutenant. Now moving on to chapter 530 the exchange between Masaki and Ryuken's mother is also streamlined within the anime as in the manga she elaborates about her school by saying that she had recently found out that cabbages and pickles are free in the cafeteria. Now this line is cut from the anime and after Ryuken's mother scolds her in the manga Masaki says that she understands as she comments on how delicious the meat is. Now this isn't in the anime. After Ryuken arrives onto the scene, a panel is cut from the anime where Ryuken's mother tells him that she will have them prepare dinner for him and she orders him to get Katagiri to clean up after he is finished. Katagiri telling Ryuken that his dinner is ready is cut from the anime as she just ends up putting the food down and Ryuken proceeds to speak to her about Masaki's happiness. The two Shinigami from earlier who Ishin had told to flee if it starts to rain have a couple of panels of dialogue cut from the anime. In the manga they comment on how it is now raining but they can't return to the Soul Society because if they do they would be punished for it. They decide to just hide as they leave the rest to Ishin. The anime cuts this out and instead shows them to hiding with Ishin commenting on how he will lure out the creature that is targeting the Shinigami. After Ishin begins his battle with White, an entire page from chapter 531 where Aizen reacts to this development is cut from the anime. He realizes that the captain of squad 10 is on the battlefield without any authorization. So he tells Gin and Tozen that this is a great opportunity for them as he wants to watch the fight up close. Now the anime does not include this as instead it shows Aizen appearing later and cutting down Ishin. Surprisingly the anime does have an exclusive line here where Ishin comments on how the hollow White is getting smarter after every every Shinigami that it devours. Now he says this line after being surprised that White isn't fighting like a hollow but instead like a Menos after witnessing it firing a Saro towards the squad 13 Shinigami. After Ishin ends up being cut down, Aizen's monologue where he speaks about the Ryatsu concealing cloak from the start of chapter 532 is cut out of the anime. He thanks Urahara and references the Turn Back the Pendulum arc and I feel like this is the only omission in this episode which kind of bothered me as the information about the cloak would have been really nice to know as Aizen ends up explaining how the cloak works and he even smugly thanks Urahara for the convenient parting gift before he was exiled of course. Ishin yelling out who had attacked him just now is cut from the anime and so is the reaction of Gin, Tozen and Aizen. As in the manga, Aizen tells them that they should leave now and how their work is done as Ishin won't be able to use his Bankai which will take a heavy toll on his body. Now I assume that some of this isn't included because the three stooges don't really end up leaving the scene and the anime cuts down the exchanges between the three of them and we just have Aizen explain how the hollow that they had created is called white because of the whiteness that is within him despite him being covered in black armor. Now this is just another Another example of a few panels that are streamlined and condensed for the sake of pacing. The anime cuts an inner monologue from Ishin where he thinks to himself that he can't activate his Bankai because his wounds are too deep resulting in him being unable to focus his spiritual pressure. After White self-destructs, Tozen commenting on it is cut from the anime as well as the reaction from the three of them. Instead, we just see Ishin and Masaki speaking. Now, this episode ends halfway through chapter 533 as one line from Tozin is cut from the anime where he explains why White was a failure, stating that they had created it for the purposes of holifying a Shinigami, not a Quincy. Now, after the end credit song, we have an unexpected post credit scene, which is exclusive to the anime. There is no dialogue here as we just see Uryu standing in the pouring rain and we see a mysterious figure off in the distance who is revealed to be Hashi 
Ashwad. Now I am assuming that the anime will show us how Uryu had ended up joining the Wandan Reich, and additions like this very brief scene at the end of this episode was sorely needed within the manga. Now this after all was a story arc where Uryu was meant to shine, so I'm really looking forward to the additional scenes involving his character in next week's episode and in the second core of the anime later on next year. As during Jump Festa 23, the voice actors and even Kubo himself had hinted at Uryu having more of a spotlight in the second core, with more exclusive scenes that would help to flesh out his role in the story. Now with one more episode left to go of the first core of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, how do you feel about the series wrapping up for now? Have you enjoyed these 11 episodes thus far and are you looking forward to next week's double feature episode combining episodes 12 and 13 into a one hour special airing on the 26th of December? I of course am super excited for the finale and there are a lot of expectations about what point they are going to be ending the first core on and how many chapters will be adapted into this 60 minute final episode. Just how much anime exclusive material are we going to be getting? Because for certain, they will wrap up the Everything But The Rain flashback in next week's episode, as well as diving into the truth of Ichigo Zanpakuto. So definitely make sure that you stick around to the channel by subscribing, so that you're the first to know about all of the latest Bleach news and what changes are made to the anime in comparison to the manga. As always, I look forward to reading about all of your comments on the 11th episode of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.